Hey guys, Simcoder here, and today we'll be starting on our next series, which will be on TikTok. Uh, this has been a highly requested series for some time, especially due to the fact that TikTok seems to have been banned from a lot of countries within the world, uh, mainly India and the United States even talked about banning TikTok. So as most of you are from India and the United States, uh, it seems like this might be a good way to get into a market uh, because TikTok is leaving a space for an app like this in those countries. Obviously in the United States it hasn't been banned and I'm not going to get into politics, but it probably won't. Uh, but in India, uh, as it is uh, a big country with a lot of people, uh, then it might be a good place to get into. So when it comes to what features do we want for this app? Well, I want to implement most of the things that come with TikTok. Obviously within reason, as TikTok is a massive application with a lot of engineers working for it, uh, but I want to get the, the basic uh, video recording. I want to get a feed showing videos of the posts that users make. I want to get the likes, the comments, uh, the profiles, the authentication, all of that. So um, I want to do the most basic stuff around every single feature that there is within TikTok, obviously within reason. And this will be made possible by using certain tools and platforms and technologies that exist already. So when it comes to our services and services meaning database, storage, um, hosting, functions, whatever, all of that, all of the things that are not within our application itself, but are hosted somewhere else, we are going to use Firebase. So we are going to use Firebase Storage for hosting our videos and images. We are going to use Firestore for our database. And uh, we are going to use functions primarily in order to run code in a server. Uh, these won't be needed for everything, but for example, for counters, for uh, any checks that must be done within our backend and not to be trusted within our user's device, then we'll reuse Firebase functions for that. Uh, in order to make sure everything runs smoothly. One other important aspect is the authentication, and for that we'll use, again, Firebase authentication, as it is really, really simple to implement and it works almost flawlessly, so yeah, it, that's a no-brainer. Then, when it comes to the development environment itself, itself, we are going to use React Native, or to be more precise, we are going to use React Native with Expo. Now, you could go with React Native CLI, which will uh, give you a bare workflow uh, project with React Native. However, this is hard to manage, it, especially for a YouTube series. It overcomplicates things that don't need to be complicated. This is to put it simply. So Expo allows you to deploy projects really easily and it basically takes care of all of the boring boilerplate stuff for you. So you don't need to worry about anything and it has been getting better and better and better over the years. So one uh, valid criticism that people have over Expo is that it takes the, the APK or the IPA, which are the compiled files that you actually download into devices so that the app can install. It, think of them as the EXE for Windows, basically. These used to be really big files uh, before. Uh, bigger than uh, those files that were compiled with React Native CLI, the normal project. However, right now uh, they are both the same size with the latest update from Expo. So it is a no-brainer right now. If you want to start a React Native project, start with um, Expo. And if you want to uh, do something that Expo isn't good for or you are unable to do with Expo, then simply eject it and you'll get a normal React Native project without having to worry about anything. And uh, this process is flawless, so yeah, it is a no-brainer. Then again, with the, the development environment, I'm going to be using Windows for this, uh, primarily because most users that view YouTube use Windows. And uh, it, I'm doing this even though I prefer to use Linux for uh, development, especially Manjaro, which is an OS that I've been loving over the past few years. 
Then I'm also going to use VS Code uh, with an extension called ES7 uh, Redux uh, React Native GraphQL, whatever, it is a big name, I'm going to drop the link down below uh, so that I can run snippets really easily, really fast. So if you see me typing um, free layers, for example, and a big chunk of code simply pops up, it is due to that package. And I'm going to explain to you uh, what I'm doing at that moment. Then another important aspect is the emulator. So I'm not going to run this on my own device. I want to show you what I'm doing. And for that, I'm going to use Android Studio's emulator in order to show you in real time what's happening and what I'm, uh, what's the result of the code that I'm writing at the moment. So uh, this is the easiest way of getting started. You could go with Jenny Motion, for example, which gives you a camera that actually works and stuff like that. Uh, but yeah, I just find that Android Studio is really easy to install. Uh, Jenny Motion sometimes gives a couple of errors that are really annoying, so yeah. So when it comes to uh, packages that we'll use within our project, we'll use for state management, Redux. This is really important as Redux helps you to organize your code first and to make sure your front end uh, UI elements are separated from the logic part of the front end uh, code. And this is really uh, useful and good in order to make sure there's a clean separation between both of them. And it helps you to uh, do state management. And what does this mean? It means that, for example, uh, when you get the user object, the currently logged in user object, you want to um, get that information in all parts of the app. So not just for the home screen, not just for the profile screen, but everything. And the only way of doing this without Redux with React Native is for you to pass around uh, the user object, the currently logged in user object is in this case, from um, component to component within the props of each component. This is a maniac, this is uh, completely undoable, and it makes your code really hard to uh, keep up with. So Redux allows you to create a, sing a single instance of the user object and uh, to allow each and every single component to access it without any issues. Then we'll use uh, primarily UI-based packages, which will allow us to make the app look and feel as closely as possible to TikTok as possible. We won't be using anything else really that fancy, except for the camera and things like that, but that comes with Expo. We just have to install the packages needed for that. But this is just the presentation video, and I'm going to show you how everything works in the setup video that we'll do after. So when it comes to the schedule, I'm going to divide this series into small videos, and I'm going to try and release one or two videos each week uh, so that you can easily go through the series and easily build up your TikTok clone. I'm going to have a GitHub repository made for this, which you'll get in the link down below. Uh, so with each and every single video, I'm going to make a new branch and I'm going to uh, push the code into that branch and then merge it into the master. By doing this, you'll be able to, even if you are not uh, doing the, the series as I upload the videos, you'll be able to see previous videos and the code that came with that video uh, by going into the branch of that video. As easy as, as that. And uh, by doing this, uh, you'll be able to really uh, learn as much as possible as you'll get the code that goes with that video. One final thing, if you have any questions, then please do leave them down below and I'll try to answer and make sure to subscribe so that you don't miss any single video of this series, which will be really amazing as I'm going to put a lot of emphasis into the front end, which is something that I don't usually do. So I will get an app that looks as close as possible to TikTok Again, keeping within reason as it is for a YouTube series and I'm not actually developing for TikTok. But yeah, I hope you uh, come along with me on this journey. It will be really, really good. Let's do it. I hope to see you again tomorrow. Ciao.